I won't uh, make any remarks about putting <laughs> dogs down or anything like that, I promise. You just uh, did. Yes. <laughs> uh, this is from uh, uh, Old Poetry's Children Under the One Wide Roof, which is about the Over the Edge reading series that the son and Susan organize in Galway. Uh, which has a lot in common with the wife, the readings in Limerick, and also the Obeil readings in uh, or opening things up in the last few years. The reading series that I were on, Over the Edge, provides a platform for new writers, both poets and fiction writers, who can read their work to a decent sized and appreciative audience. It was born in Galway City Library on Wednesday, January the 22nd, 2003, when the first Over the Edge open reading took place. Uh, the featured readers each read for 15 minutes. Uh, if we had the Pope or Seamus Heaney, they get 15 minutes as well, no longer. After they've finished, there's an open mic, and readers of the audience can read a poem or a short ex extract from the story or novel they're working on. The first night, my good wife, Susan Miller de Mars, who you'll be hearing from later, was the MC for the evening, and that's remained the format ever since. We guarantee new writers an audience for honing their work. Our smallest crowd over the past six years, and I monitor these things, has, was 25. Our largest, about 90. The average of late has been about 50. It's never all the same crowd turning up month after month. Different readers will draw different crowds. Our email list, the key to the promotion of our readings, now runs to several thousand. At this stage, a decent percentage of the population of Galway City have attended at least one over the edge reading. One of the questions I always ask myself when we're lining up the featured readers for any given month is, what niche audience will each of them bring, for example, what writers group are they a member of, or whatever. My good friend Gary King thinks my experience of tiny left-wing meetings during my long years as a member of the militant tendency in the 1980s has filled me with a chronic fear of small crowds, he perhaps has a point. Since I turned 40, I have a good deal less tolerance for many things, and none at all for the idea that it's impossible to get a decent turnout of poetry reading. If you have a positive attitude, an inclusive approach, and most important of all, you persist, then your audience will grow, grow. Now, the word inclusive is much abused by politicians and poverty and street bureaucrats in search of votes and grants. What it means in this context is not that all poems or all poets are equal. To paraphrase George Orwell, some poems, some poets are more equal than others. To deny this leads us towards the absurdity of pretending that, say, Shakespeare is no better, no worse than a poet. There's, there's, there's fledgling, fledgling male poets whose only outlet today has been to scribble their masterpieces on the walls of public conveniences around Galway City. It's not that I haven't, from time to time, seen some snappy lines scrolled in such places, but all things consider, considered, Shakespeare is better. However, if one of Galway's toilet wall poets wants to come along and read at the open mic, he would be most very welcome. All must have an audience, if not necessarily a lasting reputation. To properly understand the role over the edge plays, it's necessary to see it in the context of the multiplicity of very rigorous workshops which take place all around the city at Galway Arts Centre, at Galway Technical Institute, GMIT, and on the NUI Galway MA in Writing. In any, in any given month, the majority of those who read at the open mic are participants in one creative writing class or another. It is rarely a case that the wild, unedited jottings of some Edgar Allan Poe in the making being given a histrionic airing, airing, although that does occasionally happen, and far more often a case of poems in which a great deal of time, thought, and consideration has been invested being given their first public hearing. I'll just speed on then to the end. What makes Over the Edge work is this combination of openness and rigorous standards. If we think that you could hold your own reading for 15 minutes alongside, say, Dennis O'Driscoll, Maeve McGuffey, and Colette Bryce, or Roddy Lumsden, to name just a few of the established poets we've had read over the last while, then we'll give you a chance. You might fly, or you might fall a little flat, but either way, no one will have died. One of our unpublished featured readers once spoke for seven minutes before reading a word of poetry. Most such early reading failures can be put down to nerves, and it's far better to be plagued with nerves than plagued with ego. 
nerves, you learn to control. And there would be something wrong if you weren't a little nervous the first time you're asked to do a 15 minute reading with an established poet on the bill beside you. The first time I read my work in public, at the Poets Podium in Tralee, County Kerry in March 1997, which was organized by this man, Bill King, I was suitably terrified. But if you're a beginning poet, an overdose of ego will be the end of you. It will make you see constructive criticism as personal slight. Others will listen to the available advice, improve their poems, and move on ahead of you. Then, of course, every success of theirs will hit you like a smack in the face. They will win the Patrick Cabin Award, the Hennessy, the Nobel. They'll be published by favor and invited to read in Athens or Tokyo. You'll either give up or worse than that. You'll vanish down dark alleys and into whiskey bottles, consoling yourself with the fact that Cabinet 2 was misunderstood in this day. I exaggerate ever so slightly. And I'll leave it there. Thanks very much. <laughs>